Have you ever wondered how to make your Alexander the Great or Charles Martel even stronger on the battlefield? Someone asked me in a live stream recently if applying extra skill damage would boost the shield on Alexander the Great, and that got me thinking, what are the things you can do to boost the shielding effectiveness of commanders like Charles Martel and Alexander the Great? Stick around for our exploration of how to make these commanders even stronger than they are today. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Today, we've done some testing to prove some interesting information about how Alexander the Great and Charles Martel work on the battlefield. If you like Rise of Kingdoms guides that help you get value and understand how commanders work, consider subscribing to the channel for daily Rise of Kingdoms videos. We're a sponsored content creator, and I learned a few things running these tests for Alexander the Great and Charles Martel. There's a couple questions we're going to answer in this video. First of all, what influences the strength of an Alexander the Great shield? Uh, is it going to be extra skill damage, or perhaps is it going to be extra attack? You see, this is sort of an interesting question because it says here that they have a damage factor. So does that damage factor get influenced by, again, skill damage, attack? I didn't know, so I went and I ran some tests. And what I found was actually very much surprising to me if you had to guess do you think that skill damage or attack would influence the amount of the shield you see my understanding is that a factor is primarily going to be influenced by the number of troops you have in the march whether it's a healing factor or a damage factor but i went and i ran three tests the first test that i ran i took an alexander the great onto the field and i said look I'm going to use the Alexander the Great by himself, and the only reason we can even run this test is that we can go into the battle log and we can actually see the amount of shielding that took place. So I went in and I said, okay, Alexander the Great had 519,000 shielding. That is seemingly a lot. I mean, that sounds like a pretty big number to me. So 519,227. Remember that. It's right up over there on the screen. So then the next thing I did is I paired with Esong. And I brought all infantry, so none of Esong's other archery stuff is gonna really matter. So I took Alexander the Great primary with Esong secondary, and I ran in and I battled the same level of barbarian on territory. Interestingly, I guess I must have got an Esong proc and had the ability to fire off a turn sooner, but on turn 10, I've got the shield, and it's 525,000. 853. That is barely increased. And if you saw my video recently, seeing that Alexander the Great no longer boosts active skill damage, he boosts just skill damage in general, I, I would have thought that if this shield is influenced by skill damage, having the Esong as the secondary should have made the shield bigger. It really didn't. Uh, the shield is bigger. I think that's just because it fired off a turn sooner. So there were more troops in the march to begin with, and that has really nothing to do with the bonus skill damage. So then I said, okay, what else could influence this damage factor? I mean, it says damage factor, right? So then I thought, what if I could boost the attack on my Alexander the Great substantially and see if I could observe an effect? So if we look here at the troop buffs, um, in the run that I had just done with the Alexander the Great Esong, I had 110.5% infantry attack. So I stuffed a bunch of attack gear onto my Alexander the Great, and we elevated that attack stat to 140%. So a pretty meaningful boost. So then we ran, ran in, battled another 24 Barbarian. This is all on territory for all of these fights. So whether or not you're getting the territory buffs from your alliance is irrelevant because I had it in every single fight. And we go look. The shielding factor is 525,747. It's really just about the same as it was before. The 30% extra attack really didn't make a particularly meaningful dent into this shield absorption amount if it really did anything at all. So as I was editing the video, I realized there is something else I could go and test that maybe influences the strength of the shield, and that is the tier of troop that you use. Do you get a stronger shield using a higher tier of troop, or is it actually the same 
regardless of what tier of troop you use. I actually don't have the answer for that one. I would expect the shield to be bigger with a higher tier of troop. But then again, I also might have expected, because it's a damage factor, that it would be influenced by the attack stat, and it wasn't at all. So let's go smash this level 24 barb. We've got our Alexander the Great primary, no secondary. We took some of the gear off, so there's not that attack stat loading that we had before. Not that it actually mattered. And we'll see in the log in just a second what that shield actually looked like and if the tier of troop seems to make a difference, and I don't think that it will. So here we go, we've got that report, we're gonna favorite it, go into the log, we hit battle log, and what do we find? Looking in about 10 turns, okay, maybe the 11th turn, Shield of the King, 528,735. Technically, this is higher, but like still not a meaningful amount higher. Like the amount I wanna see this go up by is like hundreds of thousands, right? Jumping a tier of troop like really didn't massively change the damage absorption amount in any meaningful way. And maybe it influenced it, but not enough for me to say like, oh yeah, you better use T5s if you're using Alexander the Great. I don't think I can make that claim here, but I still think this was an interesting test. So we've proven it looks like skill damage, also attack, and also <laughs> having T5 versus T4 troops doesn't seem to make a difference. Let's jump back to the rest of the video. So what do I take away from this? If what you wanted to do was make your shield more effective, I think you have to just bring more troops. Of course, I suppose we can go do that. We can prove that if we bring a smaller number of troops, we'll have a smaller shield, but I don't know that I even need to do that because every time you run around on the battlefield and you're fighting, you see the active skill damage go down or go up based on the size of the march, how many troops are in there. So I really think that might be one of the only ways you can influence your shield strength, but maybe I'm missing something. Let me know down below in the comments if there's some other way that you can make the shield from Alexander the Great even stronger than it is today, or the shield of Charles Martel even stronger than it is today. From what I can tell, boosting your skill damage doesn't seem to do it. Uh, boosting your attack doesn't seem to do it. And those are things I would have maybe expected to have more of an influence. If you enjoyed this video and are looking for more in-depth information on game mechanics, I'll put a couple of cards up in the top where we took a deeper look at Constantine, Joan of Arc, and also Alexander the Great. I think those are pretty insightful to these commanders where, yeah, it would seem intuitive how some of these things go, but you never know, sometimes you might find yourself really kind of surprised. Consider subscribing if you haven't already for daily Rise of Kingdoms videos. Put a like on the video, and until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.